Hey everybody, Brian Coolis here, Lead US Product Specialist for Native Instruments. I'm really excited to be here today at DJ Tech Tools to introduce to you uh, the latest addition to the machine family, the machine jam. This is the perfect tool for sequencing beats, playing melodies, um, and just and creating your track extremely quickly. So let's just dive right into it and show you what this hardware can do. What you're looking at here is the initial default layout of the hardware. These are all the different patterns that I have per group. So I still have group A, B, C, D all the way to H, and I can still have an infinite amount of groups, which I can just toggle over using the directional pad over here. So per group, I have all the different patterns that I would want to have access to. So let's just take a listen to some of the elements that I have already in here. So I can quickly switch between my different drum patterns. Now let's add some other patterns from group B. Let's add some pad sounds. I have different bass lines here on group D. And I can quickly switch between multiple patterns simultaneously. So even just performing with the pads here, I have an idea. I already have the first sketch of my song. So with Jam, I'm actually able to arrange my song in a matter of seconds. So at the top here, I have the different scenes of my project. So for scene one, I basically just pick and choose which patterns I want to have play for scene one. So I hit scene one, and maybe I want this drum pattern, those pad sounds to play. Scene two, I want that drum pattern, that bass line, and those pads. Scene three, I want that bass line, those drums, those pads. And then scene four, I want the last drum pattern, these little vocal samples that I have, and those two patterns. So now I can just trigger the different scenes and play them back. So scene one, the intro of the song. Switch to scene two. And if I want to play the whole entire song, I just hold scene one to scene four. And now it's going to play my whole song from start to finish. Or maybe I just want to work on a particular section of the record. I can just hold scene two to scene three, and it's just going to loop those two scenes. From this point on, you know, I would start editing certain parameters, such as, you know, customizing the sound, adding effects, but the structure of my song is already there, which is really the key element. The Jam hardware offers a unique step sequencing uh, functionality. So there's three different step modes that I have available. So the first is step mode number eight, where I can actually sequence eight sounds simultaneously. So I'm gonna make a new drum pattern. So just hit an empty slot. And I hold step down and I'm gonna hit number eight. So now when I hit play, you can see I have the first eight sounds going across the, the pad matrix. So this is only a one bar pattern. So if I need to get further down in the sequence, I just hit number two and it lets me get to the remainder part of this section. So scene one, let's program some drums. Add some other elements. We can just do something random. So 
So it's not the best beat in the world, but I'm able to really quickly sketch out or create an idea. Now, maybe you don't want to have access to all eight sounds simultaneously. Maybe you just want to limit your drum track just to four elements. I'm actually just going to clear out that pattern that I just created. And I'm going to go back into step mode, but I'm going to hold down step and hit number four. So this allows me to now sequence four sounds at the same time. Let me clear this out. So I already have some elements in here, but this is sound one, two, three, and four. And if I need to access the rest, I can just hit down on the directional pad here and get to the remainder of my sound slots. So add some other elements. So a little snare fill. If you want to have the more traditional style step sequencer, I can hold down step mode and hit one, and I can just select a particular sound, like the kick drum, sound slot one, and then program in uh, the events for that sound. So. Now I can also play this in live if I wanted to just by the, just by triggering the pads in the, the bottom right hand corner. So I just hit record. Now let's say I just want to add one additional tom hit. I can just go back into that sound and then add it back into the step sequencer. So as you can see, it's extremely quick to program out my beat just using the jam. Now let's say I have a machine hooked up. Actually, let's just grab this one. Now once I hook up my machine, I can actually use these in tandem. So let's say I want to you know, program a beat still using the machine pads, velocity sensitive and all of that. I can still use the hardware all of the notes that I play will actually just get recorded into the machine software and then I'm able to edit it after the fact just using this step sequencer here. So it's all, all good to go. Just hit record and play in the beat live. There we go. Just quantize it. So I can also quantize on the jam hardware. So I just hit shift and quantize. Now let's say you know I didn't hit all of the hi-hats that I wanted to. I can now just go into the step sequencer and then edit those notes. Maybe I want some more of these sounds. If you just have the jam, um, you can still just hit pad mode and then play the pads on here. Or if you also have a machine, Micro Studio Mark II, I can still play in my Beats Live using this hardware and then edit it again using the jam. We have this new feature called Notes. So if I hit the Notes button, and let's go to group C where I have a melodic sound. I can actually use the smart strips down here to play individual notes or even strum a melody or bass line. So if I hit notes again, so I can play it in live.
Now, there's a couple other additional functions of the notes. So, for example, if I hit the notes button, uh, it brings up an on screen overlay where I can dial in what scale I want to actually play. So, right now it's set to minor. Maybe I want to change it to a major pentatonic scale. So, now when I strum, it's going to be in key with whatever scale I have set in my software. I can also set different strum modes or different notes modes. So right now I'm on the chord mode, but I can also go over to user mode, for example, and construct my own chords using the, the pads at the top here. So maybe if I just have one pad lit up, it's one note, another one, just have three. But now let's say I want to add some more. Add these other two. These. And let's just add a bunch. You can see if I tried to play that on the machine, you can actually see the pads light up. So we can record something in here. I'm going to go back to the chords mode. There's another way to add in melodic elements uh, using the hardware. So let's go to group D where I have my bass line or my bass sound and I'm going to do shift pad mode which brings up keyboard mode. where I can now play the pads uh, just like a keyboard. And while in keyboard mode, I'm also able to choose what scale I want to have play for these pads. Again, just touch the encoder here. And right now it's set to chromatic. So maybe I'll set it to harmonic minor. I can play in my notes using the pad matrix here. But another way I can do this is by holding shift note repeat, it brings up the arpeggiator so I can just hold down multiple pads and it's going to arpeggiate whatever notes I'm playing. Let's add a new pattern and record something in. Now my pattern length is actually set to one bar right now. So I want to adjust this, make this a little bit longer. To do that, I can hold down shift and hit pat length or the solo button. And now my pads here actually dictate how long my pattern is going to be. So right now it's set to one bar. Maybe I want it two bars or three bars or 64 bars if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm just going to make a four bar pattern and let's record in a bass line. Just quickly created a baseline using the arpeggiating function. When I hit the level button, the strips down here allow me to mix the levels of each individual group or each individual sound from a particular group. So if I hold down level and hit, let's say, just group A, all the group buttons are illuminated, letting me know that the strips down at the bottom are controlling volume for each individual group. So if I just hit play, you'll be able to see the different elements uh, playing. Now, let's say I want to mix individual levels of my drums. I'm on group A, I just hold level, I'm going to hit pad one and the first eight pads are lit up indicating that the eight strips here are controlling sounds one through eight. If I hit the right arrow over, now I'm controlling sounds nine through 16. A unique feature that's on the jam hardware is this lock button here. This actually has a bunch of different use cases. So a simple use case 
The lock feature works really well when adjusting volume. For example, if I hit the lock button first, I can start adjusting my levels. And then when I hit lock again, all of these values are gonna reset back to how they were before I hit lock. So if I want to do this with groups, This lock feature works with a lot of different features and functions within Jam. Let's say I want to customize the sound of my bass line here. I'm going to go to group D and hold down the control button and I want to control the parameters for sound slot 1. Now my touch strips at the bottom are allowing me to adjust the same parameters if I was doing this on machine where I had my 8 knobs at the top here. An advantage to having the touch strips at the bottom is I can actually manipulate with four fingers simultaneously. If I wanted to do that on the machine hardware, I can really only adjust two, maybe three knobs simultaneously. But with the Jam hardware, I can actually manipulate more than just two or three. So if I hit the lock button, I can start customizing the sound a little bit more. If I go to the next page, I have my next set of parameters that I can adjust. And I hit lock. And then it resets everything back to how it was before, before I hit the lock button. So talking about the live performance aspect with the hardware, we've actually added some unique effects to the machine software that were specifically designed to be used with the smart strips and these are called performance effects. Now the performance effects I can add one per group so if I hit perform right now I just have four performance effects on there but this makes it really easy to use them in a live setting. When I touch the strip down at the bottom it automatically activates that effect and then I can customize the parameter just sliding my finger up and down. So let's just take a listen to the drums, for example. So I have a stutter effect there. Group B, I have the ring mod effect. Group D was a filter. And then group, uh, group C is a flanger. So all together allows me to have a you know, performance element to my song. And I can actually record all of that as automation if I want to, let's say, add a stutter, the pitch down effect in the middle of my record. So I'm going to hold the auto button and pin it so that it becomes a toggle rather than having to hold it down the entire time. So I hit the auto button and then I can just start using the performance effects and have that automation be recorded into the software. I can do all of this again with just the Jam hardware, but if you previously own any of the other machine brands, Micro, Mark II, or the Studio, this makes a great addition to your current setup. To learn more about Jam and to get your own, just click the link below. I'm Brian Coolis, and you're watching DJ Tech Tools.